In case you couldn't already tell, I'm not in a very good mood tonight. Recently, I had a conversation with a friend about a show called True Blood, and I must say, I was very hesitant about watching this show, because I believe that today's pop culture drastically misrepresents vampires. Case in point, Twilight. And may I remind everyone that I will not be doing a review of those celluloid abortions on this show. But anyway, so the conversation was about True Blood. But I go back and watch it. I watched the first season. And it was wonderful. Sure, the show wasn't very scary, but it was suspenseful. And it dealt with vampires and other supernatural creatures. And I could relate to some of the characters. Because... A vampire, they're vampires, it works. The second season? It was a little far-fetched with the whole uh, head maiden of Dionysus and, and the Fellowship of the Sun subplot it ended lackluster, but overall it was fantastic. The third season? Toothless, to say the very least. There was only really two redeeming qualities about that whole season. That was the backstory between Carrick and the show's villain Russell Edgington, and how Russell Edgington killed his family and this whole rivalry. It was good. And of course, the villain himself, Russell Edgington, he was a good villain. But everything else, it, the pacing was just too slow. Every week I felt like something should have just picked up, but it never did. It was just, uh. But the fourth season was better. Granted, the, the, the witch plotline, I felt like it kind of ended strangely. It was sort of a start and stop thing. They should have ended the season with her being killed, but no. She dies one episode later, and then in another one, the season finale, she possesses Lafayette. Who is a medium? Come on. It's like they're slowly but surely giving every character on that show supernatural powers. I mean, what's next? Arlene's going to have invisibility powers. But overall, season four was a good season, and it made me want to watch season five. Because in season five, they had Chris Maloney, the, the man from the Law and Order Special Victims Unit show. And he was a good character. And everything seemed to be going right, you know. Russ Agington was coming back, uh, Eric and Bill were in trouble, and they were on the run. It, it just, it fit well. But then, you kill Chris Maloney off! Please, somebody help! That was stupid! He was the best character of the season! And then, you kill the pretty shape-shifting lady, and then, you... you kill off Russell Edgington in the most anti-climactic way possible! I was hoping that you would learn your lesson from the sixth from the fifth season going into the sixth season. And it seemed like that. I mean, you got Rutger Hauer, who is one of the greatest living actors in the world, and you have Warlow. Granted, I, I hated season five, but the only thing one of the only things that kept me wanting to come back to season six was the idea of Warlow. He looks scary. It, it seemed like you were going to have a real hardcore vampire again. But what do you do? You ruin that too. Rutger Hauer, you take his character away in the sixth six episode. And then Warlow, he, he turns out to be nothing more than a little pretty boy. Slightly better than Robert Pattinson. And then you had this great villain character, Governor Borel. That was a good idea. I, I, I mean, yes, he was a villain. He had this vicious vendetta against vampires, but, but it made sense because you understood where he was coming from. I mean, sure, I mean, he wasn't perfect, but he wasn't terrible. But what do you do? You kill him off. You have Bill the Vampire God, which that was another thing about season five that didn't make any sense. You had him come in and just kill him like that. Just before things started to get good! I can barely remember the last time I wasn't in danger. And the daughter! You made Governor Bar Barrell's daughter into a vampire? That doesn't make any sense! That's what I hate about you young people. You and your little pop culture.
sculpture is it? Oh, look at me. I think being a vampire would be so cool. Being a vampire is not cool. It sucks. No pun intended. But seriously, why would you want to be a vampire? You think all of a sudden you, you, you become sexy and, and everyone wants to date you? It doesn't work like that at all, okay? Throughout the centuries, you don't get better looking. You get scarier looking. Just look at me. And you don't date other vampires because other vampires are jerks. I mean, I'm relatively nice for a vampire to tell you the truth. And the dating humans is stupid because they're all idiots. Which is why I'm having this conversation with you right now. And and you don't get you don't get to go to restaurants. I would love to just go out and pick out the golden corral, but I can't. Because vampires can't eat real food. And I can't go to the beach. Sure, I can, I can go at night time, but it's not the same. <sighs> okay. So being a vampire, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, you get to hypnotize people. You get to wear a cool cape. You get to turn into a bat. You're practically invincible during the night time. But I still meant everything that I said. And another thing, Stephen Moyer is dreadful. I could do a better southern accent than that. I had a friend named Ramblin' Bob. I know I just made things awkward. I apologize. But next week, I'll be in a better mood. I'll be reviewing a movie called The Pact, which will be, be pretty fun. But until then, remember, as far as things go, when things go bump in the night, there are such things.